I, I would say girls up until about five. <laughs> but then the girls take over after five. Yeah. And they run the world. Ask Beyonce. <laughs> just run the world after that. It just run. You know, we're about all kinds of craziness. They told me I may not be able to get a, a license to carry in New York City because I don't know if we, if we have a girl, what I'm going to do. I don't have a license to carry, but I found the archery range. Hey! I'm going to learn how to shoot a bow and arrow. <laughs> you can't tell me no. Amen. So pray for me, praise God. Book of Numbers, the 27th chapter, Zelophehad is a cool guy. He had seven children. He passed away. I want to read the scripture for context. Numbers chapter 27, verse 1 through 11. And then we're going to jump over to Joshua. Okay? The book of Joshua 17. We're going to pull some things out of there. Hopefully you'll be encouraged and you'll leave. I Listen, I know that we told people the conference was Monday, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We told brothers to stay home and stay out of our business. But let me tell you something. God has been dealing with us the whole weekend. I'm a man. Let me tell you, God bless me on Friday night. Amen. Amen. Bless me real good. Elder T. Ann Brown, she preached to my preacher. There's one thing when, when, when someone preaches to you and the condition you're in, but when they, they find the place where you're in, she preached to my preacher, and it blessed me, and then yesterday morning, we had an opportunity to hear some very, a lot of information, some important information about finances, and we have the information for the young lady who came. She is, she does, she's a license, she's a license or an uh, insurance broker, but she does a bunch of things on finance, and she can help you figure things out, you know, end of year, end of life planning and all of that. Let me tell you something, it is a travesty for those of us in the body of Christ, forget about being black, for those of us in the body of Christ to not leave an inheritance for our children. Yeah. It is a travesty. We yeah. discovered yesterday that most of us really do is we put money away as an emergency fund. We don't right. even have life insurance. We don't put nothing away just in case this, you know, in the term, uh, we don't let this term or hold, we don't know anything about exactly. annuities. Yeah. But I guarantee you, though, you'll spend $2,000 on Christmas easy. Uh, easy. <laughs> you know, easy. We don't even need it without thinking about it. But if you take some of that and put it away, you might be able to put away for your children, children $1,500, $200,000, and you don't have to worry about it. Amen. The, the scripture we're about to read, the gentleman worked, left an inheritance, but because of the laws of the land, his inheritance was almost lost. The book of Numbers 27, I'm going to read from the King James for the sake of just connecting all of us, but I'm going to be teaching out of the home. It says, the daughters of Zelophehad approached. Zelophehad the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir. Oh, by the way, Hepher was a man. The son of Machir, <laughs> the son of Manasseh. I ain't gonna talk about your ex-boyfriend now. Of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of the daughters. Mala, Noah, Hagla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. They stood before Moses and before Eleazar, the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves against the Lord in the company of Korah. I'll explain that. But he died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away? from among his family because he hath no son. Let me just put my finger here. I read an article this morning where most of the churches in Europe are being overtaken by, they're becoming mosques because Islam has overtaken the religious structure in Europe. So they're walking into Roman Catholic temples, they're walking into Pentecostal structures, they're walking into apostolic uh, edifices and they are praising Allah. 
Now the building is just a building, but here's where my frustration is. We are the sons who can take the authority of their father. And you, you would argue with me that Allah and our God are the same God. Allah means God in the same in, in the language, but translated. But the essence of God is different. I'll tell you why. Because the God that we serve was concerned not just with sons, but with daughters. Wait a minute before you fight me on it. Before you fight me on it, I want to push a little further the envelope so we can have the conversation. You can't have it with me now. I'll sit down with you. We'll walk through the Quran together. We'll walk through the Bible together. And I'll show you where the scriptures in the Quran honor Jesus. Not only do they honor Jesus, but the woman they honor in the Quran is the mother of Jesus. How? If you have a faith that will reduce women, but the one you honor, the woman you choose to honor is the woman of the man you only call a prophet, I have a question to ask. Because that means you either believe what you believe or you believe up to a certain degree in Islam. I'm going to push the envelope a little bit further because some of us in the church have taken Islamic approaches to the scripture. What do I mean? They would rather hold the woman down so that they can feel good. Many men in the body of Christ have issues with their security. They preach the Bible from the perspective, one, that they've been taught, but also from the perspective that they can, they can have an advantage over the opposite sex. Now I know that I'm taking, a, I'm taking a little bit of liberty to walk here because we're getting a little bit nervous, but the truth is the God of the Bible is not a chauvinist. The people who preached it are chauvinistic. Many of them are chauvinists. But the God of the Bible is not a chauvinist, and I can prove it out of the text. However, when I consider the fact that this God that we serve took his time to put in the text that there were no sons, I have to spend time speaking to women. Because there are nations that are lining up, waiting for the gospel to be preached, and there is no man to preach it. So I would be wise to position the daughters to preach because there is an inheritance on the line. Just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Our, inheritance our inheritance is on the line. On the line. See, when you, when you understand the gospel message of Jesus Christ, it was passed down from generation to generation. Some of us got proud about it. Some of us positioned ourselves to tell the story because we always want to be it. I'm going to take my time here. When I was younger, we used to play a game. Long before the Atari, there was a game called Hide and Seek. <laughs> hide and Seek was a fun game. Those of you in America understand Hide and Seek. Those of us from the islands play Coop. Play Coopy. Hide and seek. Everyone would put their foot in or they would count. Mickey Mouse built the house. How many bricks did he put in? <laughs> right? Then you would count down. And the person who was left, they were? It. Come on, they were? It. Now, <laughs> the person who was it had an assignment. Their assignment was to, to find the ones who were hidden. Am I right? Hide and seek. So it had to find the one that was hidden. And I began to read the text, and I got kind of caught up there thinking about this game. As a matter of fact, before we go back into this little, this little, this little parable that I'm using here, I want us to go back to the text. It says, give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. That means the possession was there. Uh, oftentimes, I heard the text taught that they went and found something to give to the daughters of Zelophehad, but the truth is that the possession already existed. They just needed someone to claim it. There are some things that you are acting as though, daughters, you've got to build it and make it. No, 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 no. Some things already exist. You just got to be in your position to claim it. We heard that on Friday night. Come on, verse 5. Let's work this text now. I feel comfortable. And Moses brought their cause 
before the Lord. Moses was the great high priest at that time, okay? He was the one who was, he was the vicar. He was the one who woke, spoke to God, and God spoke to him on behalf of the people. And what happened, Moses, Moses heard something that perplexed him. This was new for Moses. Moses is not, remember, Moses is the one who penned the law. He received the law from God. However, he, because he had never heard this perspective of the law, then most lawyers don't really, don't really work the law. They work the loopholes in the law. Yes. That's what lawyers do. Yes. The lawyers take the law and read the law and say, but you didn't say that I couldn't do X. That's what lawyers do. Their job is to know the law well enough to identify the loophole. Moses knew the law well enough, but he could not address the loophole. So he had to go to the judge. Let's work. Verse 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Come on. The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of the inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. So here it is, what I just said. The inheritance was there. They just had, he had no one to possess it, okay? Ain't that, isn't that crazy? To have something laid up somewhere. You ever found $20 in your pocket and it felt good? Your whole, your whole lunch plan changed. Yes. Baby. Yes. I tell you. The whole lunch plan switches up. Like, oh, no. I put cheese on it. Found $20 in my pocket. It was there. You just didn't know it. And if you like me, you put money away so that you, you forget it. The only one I can't forget is the one in my wallet. But the, if it's somewhere in a shoebox or somewhere, it's, you be happy come Christmas time when you put your coat on. <laughs> Where does it come from? <laughs> you put that on the chair. Let me put on try on the other coat to see if I put any other money in there. The possession, the inheritance was there. Come on, verse 8. Let's read. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then he shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his The major issue here was because of the name. The name makes the difference. They didn't want to pass the inheritance to the daughter because a father's job was to vet the new son-in-law to see if her, if what he was going to give as a daughter would be worthy, if he was, if his name was worthy enough to receive the inheritance that he had for his daughter. So they didn't want to give the inheritance to the daughters because it may fall into the wrong hands. The, nowadays, you just marry people because they're cute. Folks just show up. This is my husband. This is my wife. We eloped. There was no eloping. You need to know who they were. Berto can't just come over here with this big old beard and bald head and think he's cute and think he's going to have any of these daughters. No, sir. Who is your people? Who are they? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on who, where, what part of Haiti you from. You got to know. Amen. Because the people from Tongue is different than the people from Bush. Yep. <laughs> you got to be mindful. The Leeward side is different from the Wayward side. Amen. You got to be careful. So they made it their business. I got to know who you are. Amen. Amen. And they, made, they said his inheritance was to pass to his daughter. Come on, verse 9. Let me get to the end. And if, I and if he have no daughter, then he shall give his inheritance to his brethren. Come on. His brothers in them. And if he have no brothers, then ye find his inheritance, and ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. So you move up a generation. Oh my. Watch this. Come on, verse 11. And if the father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him in his family, and he shall possess it. And he shall, and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute or a new law, as unto the as the Lord commanded Moses. So this last verse is saying, if the if the father didn't have any brothers, then you will find a cousin somewhere. This is why it's important to know who your people are. That's right. I'm going to work this in a minute. You need to know who your people are. Not just your people in your, in, your, in, your, in your family, your bloodline, but you need to know the people in your circle. 
Work at it a minute. It's, a, it's very important. Well, I, I love, I say this all the time, I go to minister at St. Martin. I love preaching at St. Martin. I, it's one of my favorite places to preach. One, because they have American food. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Everything is not pounded or mashed or steamed. They got, they got other things. When I go there, I love the people because of, it's, a, it's really the friendly island. First time I went to minister, um, I went there and I had an opportunity to preach because my mom and my dad, and I said this here from the pulpit publicly, that I had an opportunity to make access to places because my parents were good people where they were. Yeah, amen. This, is, this is important. You need to understand that when you have, you need to know who your people are. If I was estranged from my mother and father, I could never gain access to the blessings that my mother and father had established. Watch this. My parents don't even know what they established for me. All they know is that they established it with good people. Some of us, many of us, many of us as daughters, I got to talk to this. We spend so much time fighting over dumb stuff that we spend time building a relationship and break it down because of what somebody else said. If I could set the scene here. The Bible says, Then came the daughters of Zelophehad. When the daughters of Zelophehad showed up, they were walking the way the thing worked, the way these inheritance happened, it wasn't just that they were the only ones who showed up and Moses and them were sitting there talking about who was better, LeBron James or Michael Jordan. They weren't just there talking. They were there for a reason. They met for a purpose at the time. There are set times when inheritances are given out. So used to see Moses and Eleazar and all the, the elders gathering at the gate. It was the place where decisions were made. This was the time of the inheritances. As we learned in chapter in the first week of the month, that in chapter 26, they had gone through the census twice. Two generations had gone. Zelophehad had, had come from, he was part of the group that had come out of Egypt. Zelophehad goes all the way back to the book of Exodus. And Zelophehad, the name is cute. And I listen to everybody struggle trying to pronounce his name all month long, trying to figure out where it was. And there are two, two possible definitions of the name Zelophehad. The first one means the first rupture. In other words, he was the one that broke, that came through his mother's matrix first. All right? They believe that that's what that, that's what some scholars say that, that was, that's what that means. However, there's another group of rabbinical literature that proves that the name, when it's vocalized, means the shadow or the protection of terror. Or in other words, he keeps them or hides them from terror. That's what this is named. So when I began to look at the text and I read the story and I considered the fact that the, the, the daughters of the Zelophehad were coming to these men, these men are sitting and talking, and I can imagine that they saw figures coming from a distance. Try to figure out who are these people. These are not shaped like sons. Because remember, Moses and them knew that this law only pertained to sons. So if I'm looking out in the distance, I'm expecting men to come. But women, now I didn't look for. All I could see is the figures in the distance. And if I could put a title to the text, it would be Hidden Figures. Wow. Where are you coming from? Who are you? I'm standing here talking and I'm expecting men to come down this, this road. And I know that there are roads to every village, every, every tribe in, 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 in Israel. And I'm expecting men to come claim their inheritance because men can be lazy when it comes to claiming what they want. They'll just show up. Come on, women of God. Some of you have dealt with them. They just come home. You worked all day. They worked all day. You come home and you're trying to hustle. And you the, 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 the rice is parboiled. And they want to know what's taking so long for the dinner to hit the table. What happened? What's taking so long? Yeah. Sons are used to getting fed. Amen. If you were, if you were raised in a house with men and women, many of us mothers, we put our sons' plates out first. <coughs> because, because the son wants to eat. However, we've got to understand that it does not disqualify my daughter. And if we were doing it right, we would make sure that the eldest ate first. I'm sitting here. So, you know, Moses and them are waiting for these figures. And as they're coming down, I, I, I'm thinking about the name Zelophehad, meaning the shadow of, of terror. See, Zelophehad 
was the son of a man of war. Zelophehad so had his grandfather was Gilead. Gilead was a warrior according to verse 1. And Gilead was the grandson of a man named Manasseh. Manasseh was a firstborn as well. Manasseh was the firstborn of Joseph. Joseph being a man who put inheritance in place in Egypt. Because when Egypt was about to go down, Joseph was the one who came up with the strategy as to how to ensure that Egypt would have done well. Now when you read the text, you got to understand that this blood is pumping through the veins of these five girls. Moses now is listening. And I could hear him, Whoo. These look like women. And Eleazar was like, bruh, I'm right. And I can imagine that these women are coming out of the dark tent after having a meeting because you can't just go to the, to the tent, to the gate to speak to Moses and the priests and the elders talking about, well, let me tell you what you got to do. And my daddy is so-and-so. And because the loaf of hat is my daddy, you better bless me. Let me teach you something about, about life. Your attitude should never precede you. Let me help somebody. Your attitude should never precede you. They should, they, should, they should want to know who you are based on how you carry yourself. Daughters of Zion, if I can give you any, any indicator of how you take the future. You don't take the future by being a mean black girl. Let me tell you. You can't slay your way into conference rooms. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't give me 26 inches of Brazilian nothing and walk into a corporate office. No way, baby. You've got to have some stuff that have, that have been riding on the inside of you that gives you the strength and also the authority to say, give me my possession. You have a right. To snap your fingers and roll your neck and say, because my God is God. You don't have a right to do it. Neither do us men. And if I see you snap your finger and roll your neck, man of God, we're going to have a talk. Praise <laughs> God. Not up in here. Hallelujah. Not in here. Take that kind of part. When you walk up, you got to understand that every step you take, these daughters weren't just walking for themselves. Yeah. How many daughters that were there before these five girls who they died broke, they died unknown, they died without inheritances because they did not know how to approach the old, the old way. See, the, the, there are laws that have to be broken. Yes. There's some rules that have to be broken. Yes. But you don't just walk up and become a lawbreaker for the sake of breaking laws. You have to have some type of method to this thing. Yes. You've got to be a listen, you can't just say I'm bad and I'm fierce and I'm and we in formation. Don't let Beyonce fool you. There has to be a way that you approach how you break the glass ceiling. There are certain weapons you use if you want to break the glass ceiling unless you want to end up in the same place of bondage. See, your hips and dips don't do it. It may, it may crack the glass ceiling, but it ain't going to get you in. Oh, let me sit here for a minute. It got quiet. There is a might in modesty. Can we make that a session next year, Women's Conference? The might of modesty. Let's talk about it. Some people don't realize that I'm all for looking cool and acting fly. I'm, I, it's all right. The papers on this good. It's a, they, I'm all cool for being fly. But some things we don't need to see when you are coming to make your case. Some things we don't need to see. Let me die and see glory land. I don't want to see it. One of the mothers in the back scratched her head. <laughs> Let me die and see Zion. Beautiful city of God. I don't need you to pull nothing down. If you got to pull it down so you can get an edge, then you're going to be taken down. That's going to be the position you stay in. 
You've got to understand the might of modesty. And I believe that these women were coming. God help me here. And as they came, they made sure that they dressed right. They were inside the tent. Listen, girl, you look good. Tears of you look right. My blood, you can pull that down a little bit, honey, because you know what they're going to say. They're going to find a reason. They're going to find a reason to say you're not worthy. See, this is why you can't play. You can't play with your opportunities, the opportunities that God gives you, because they're, the world will look for a reason to shoot you down. They will look for, especially as a woman. Listen, there's a conversation that is being had around the world about white privilege. The white privilege, to be honest with you, is white male privilege. It's not white women privilege. Because the women, the white women are struggling too. They just don't talk about it. We want to, we are the ones who march for stuff. We want to push stuff. We want to get the, but after that, what you got? After your march, we hear, what else is there? Because if they let you in the door, you know you only have one chance, right? Hello, you know that, right? If you argue and you fight and you march and you, 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 you bring and kick and scream and they give you a chance, you know that everybody, everybody in your race is riding behind you, right? Every woman is riding on your skirt tails. You know that, right? The, the future, hallelujah, is riding on the skirt tails of the femme of the present. So then, watch this. When they show up, they're walking. I believe that they, they have to have the conversation like, girl, I believe some of them, wait. even as they're walking, I'm so scared. And the other one was like, I'm scared too, girl. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And as they're walking, I believe that, that their gowns are pulling up the dust and they're they're stepping on, on, on they're stepping all over puddles on the road and the girls are nervous and one begins to whimper and the big sister is like, listen, you don't have a shush, sh don't cry. You don't got a right to cry now. If you cry, they're gonna put us out. If you cry, they're gonna say we don't have it. If you cry, they're not gonna say we're worthy. You don't have a right to cry. And the baby sister might have been saying, I don't know what to do. And Mama looked at Noah and Noah's biting her lip and and and, and, and hobbling say, I don't know what to do. And Milka is like, Tirza, you the one. I, we don't even know if you're Egyptian or not. Just come on. Just, <laughs> come on here. Because you need to find a reason to stick together. If I can teach the women real fast, men of God, you need to catch it too. You need to find reasons to stick together. It's already too many things and there's so many arrows pointed at us already. You got to find a reason to stick together. You got to find a reason. So what she said that? So what? It hurt your feelings. So what? Some of us need it, but we don't know it. Uh, yes. As they're walking, walking, I believe that one sister reached out their arm to the other sister and said, it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this thing. Amen. Yeah. We're going to get through this thing. And I believe that as they were going there, they, they, they understood. I think they might have rehearsed their position. See, because when we read the text, we read it from verse 1. But actually what happened, what happened was verse Verse through verse two, they stood before Moses, and Moses now got their names. So that approach took a long time. So this is why the hidden figures piece is so important because they knew who they were, but Moses didn't know who they, who they were. Moses didn't know their names. Eleazar didn't know their names. They might not have even known Zelophehad, but they knew Joseph. They knew Manasseh. They knew Gilead. That's why the name is so important in verse 1. Because Moses now knew who they were when they got to the gate. I travel a little bit each year. One of the things I realize is that you can put your bag, check your bag in all you want. You can be somebody else to put your bag in. But you don't, we don't know who you are until you get to the gate. Can I help somebody it's when you get to the gate, they check your stuff. Because not everybody has to go to the front end to get, to get a, a little check-in. So you make it to the gate, and guess what they do? Can I see your, can I see your ID, please? And, and if, you, if they're like me, some of these nasty folks in LaGuardia, they hold it up to your face. They, they don't just look at it and look up at you. They take your ID out and hold it up to your cheek. Like, is this you? Listen, I was 50 pounds lighter. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> God, don't talk to me like that. All right? But there's, you cannot take your position. You can't take your possession if you don't know your position. If you don't know who you are, you don't have a right to go to the gate. 
And many of us are in, are in places arguing without knowing our identities. We're arguing about stuff that if we go to the gate, we won't have access to anyway because we don't know who you are. Come here, you seven boys in Acts. The seven sons of Skeba walked around looking at Paul, listening to Paul preach, impressed at Paul casting out devils, but they did not know who they were. They looked, hallelujah, they looked at the, the this demons being casted out and said, I want to do this. And guess what happened? When they begin to cast, when they begin to walk up to the man who was possessed, the thing that they would they wanted to possess possessed them. Can I help somebody real quick? If you're not careful, you will put yourself in a position trying to take something you don't have right to because you don't know who you are. And the thing that you want to possess is going to possess you. What do I mean, preacher? If I don't know who I am in Christ and I do get my hands on the lot of money, the money that I wanted to possess is going to possess me. If I don't know who I am and I get the job and I get myself in the career, the career that I wanted, that I thought I was going to possess is going to possess me. If I don't know who I am and I finally get the man that looked like Morris Chestnut, the man that I wanted to possess is going to possess me. Then we can't find you at church. We don't see you no other time. We tell what happened to you, sister? Well, you know, the man of God said, no, hold on, wait a minute. How you pray to God? Now you run on God for the man? Nah, uh You were possessed by the thing you wanted to possess because you don't know who you are. If he met you in church, how you going to quit on God? Because he met you in church. I'll talk for a minute. Some of you daughters are crazy. I'll be honest with you. You on the altar. He met you on the altar. Why in the world you going to leave the altar to let this clown alter you? Why? You should get him now. Oh, yeah. I got a text message on. Pastor, I got to go. <laughs> what? When did this happen? <laughs> when did this happen? And she's like, oh, I'm like, I got to stop home. I got to, you know, I got to go. He only drink, he only drink Welch's, the passion fruit Welch's. And I, where, where are you going? Well, the only sort of habit is downtown Brooklyn. So you need a prayer to go downtown Brooklyn to get Welch's passion fruit juice? <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? Come on. Can I talk to the daughters and be honest? Because some of us, and we call that love, that's crazy. You are possessed. You are owned. You are ruled. You've got to understand that if that's what you do, be comfortable in that. And if he can't get with that, if he's trying to pull you away from that, then you don't need him. Amen. If that job is trying to pull you away from that, then you don't need it. If the job meant you going to church on Sunday, they don't have a right to tell you that you can't go to church on Sunday. I'll write the letter and I'll give you the law that says it. Because we are so content with the possession that we forget that there is a possessor of heaven and earth. You pull yourself away because you don't know your position. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the land was not paid for in cash. The land was paid for in blood. The land that they were trying to gain was not a cash purchase. It was a blood purchase. The father, the grandfather won it in war. Gilead was the man of war. He won the possession and willed it to his son, who willed it to Zelophehad. But because Zelophehad didn't have a son, they were now saying that the blood that was shed for this piece of property is now none and void because of the because of the genetic makeup of his seed. No way. Some of you have been ruled. By your genetic makeup. Pastor, I can't do this because I'm a woman. Are you crazy? Any man with sense knows is that you got a better chance letting a woman do it. Any man with sense. Pastor, you know, man, you know, it's, not a, it's not a woman's job, it's a man's job. <laughs> but you put some voice, some bass in your voice, man of God. 
It's a man's job. What is a man's job, really? To sow seed. <laughs> to sow seed. How do I know that? Because when the woman was formed and created, guess what she did? The same job as the man. You don't like me now, do you? <laughs> the exact same job as a man. She worked the ground like he worked the ground. She pushed the plow like he pushed the plow. His job was to sow seed. Her job was to carry. When we get away from that, that's when you have men who want to become women and then have them implant things in their bellies. Craziness. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to preach a series. They're going to be mad at me. It's called Photoshop Christianity. They're going to be mad at me. They're mad at me. You can nip and tuck all you want, baby. They're going to be mad at me. You can nip, tuck, slip, whatever you want to do. It, you, a man is a man is a man is a man. Yes. If you have to take a tablet, not a pill, a tablet, to get estrogen, sir, something is wrong. If you got to get a tablet, ma'am, to grow a mustache, first of all, Why, daughter? <laughs> Why? I was born this way, Pat. Well, be born again. <laughs> See, the land was paid for in blood, but it was secured by your name. One of the, their great grandfather shed blood, so then they had viable. They had to have viable proof that they had they had a right to what was in front of them, or else they could not have gone to the gate. You don't go into the big meeting not done the homework. You don't take your future without checking the past. What do they tell you to do with the past? Study it. Why? Because if you don't study the the history, you're going to repeat it again. Any past that is not studied is going to become the future. Yeah. I'm saying it again. Yeah. Any past that is not studied is going to become a future. So if you try to ignore the fact that your mother was a crackhead, then more than likely you have an opportunity if not to become addicted to crack, become addicted to something else because you did not pay attention to your past. If your daddy had bipolar disease or disorder, then you need to check yourself regularly. You better in the name of Jesus all the way to the doctor's office to be sure that the healing is secure. Jesus used to tell them, check it. The man who got healed from the vision, he said, look, if you, ain't, if you don't test the healing, then how do we know that you've been healed? Let me help some of you. Some of you daughters are struggling because you don't, you're not ready to deal with your stuff yet. You can't be healed because the moment something looked like the thing that you've been through, yes. you kick up on it. You rear up. Yes. I'm not disappear. I ain't going to talk to you. I'm over it. I'm over this place. If I had a dollar for every time I heard a daughter say I'm over it, yeah. you should be over the rainbow by now. Just over to you <laughs> You're all these, oh, I'm over it. I've been there. I've done it. And the thing is, if, this is, let me help you understand something real quick. If you are over it, it wouldn't matter. Yes. 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 If you were over it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. Now, here's the thing. That's why I said they had they to deal with it. Now, the most powerful thing that they had to deal with in my last few minutes is this. They had to understand and fight with the hiddenness. They knew who their daddy was. But they had to, had to, be a, they had to become comfortable with hiding. I want to, this is where I want to encourage the women of God here, is that your hiddenness is a test to how you handle being in the open. I'm saying it again. Your hiddenness is a test. The, the test is not how you act on stage. How you act on stage is the proof. The test is how you act in private. I'm saying that again. 
The test is not the stage. The test is the proof. The stage is the proof. The test is how you behave when you're not seen. And these women were hidden. You've got to understand that it's possible that one of these children, hear me, one of these children might have come out of Egypt with Zelophehad. Zelophehad came out of Egypt. Now we're looking at the second generation, which more than likely means that the children, the youngest child was about 40. There was five of them. So they had to, they had to be hidden for at least 40 years. At least. They had to be covered. They had to be kept. They had to be sealed up. There's nothing worse than being a secret girlfriend. Hallelujah. Jesus. But imagine being a secret daughter. Imagine being a secret daughter. Not knowing who your mother is. Not knowing who your father is. Not knowing what your sisters look like. There, there's a generation of people now that we got this, this Ancestry.com DNA test. And you got this, the 23andMe DNA test. And for all intents and purposes, you got Facebook. You find in family you ain't even know existed. Can you imagine walking onto Facebook and finding somebody with the same face as yours who come from the place that you heard your daddy might have been? Can you imagine? So we don't even know, come, just watch me, we don't even know if they were all raised in the same house. We know that by the time daddy died, you know, some of us only meet our relatives at the funeral. Yeah. <laughs> See, love. We only meet some of our relatives at the funeral. We don't know where they came from. We don't know how they got here. What was your story like? And I believe all of that was happening in the hidden place. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Hide and go seek. When I used to play hide and seek, what I used to do, we used to play in my house. And what I used to do is I used to look for the folks. I used to look for things that looked like people in the dark. Because y'all play yeah, cute hide and seek. We used to turn the lights off. Wait for, wait for the moonlight to come through the window. And I'm looking to see if the curtain is moving. Is that, it looked like it's breathing. Keep up on it. Gotcha. That was me. I was that one. I was looking, and I'm looking for something that looked like a person. I was looking, watch this, for the hidden figures. The thing that is it is never looking for the one that's in the forefront. Oh. It, listen, the thing that is it is always looking for the thing that is hidden. This is why American Idol and The Voice is such a powerful thing. Because what they're doing is they're looking for the people, guess what, who have it. Sometimes they say, I don't know what it is about you, you just have it. It is looking for the hidden figures. And I believe that this land had been laying there. The blood of their grandfather. The blood of their father. The blood of their great, great grandfather. Even up to Joseph had been crying out from the ground. I have it and I need y'all to find the people who are going to take it. I sit and I wonder how many women of God are sitting under the sound of my voice who know that there's something there somewhere and they feel like they've been hiding and they're just waiting for it to find them there. They're just sitting in the low. They're trying to say, when, when, when are you going to catch how good I am? Some of you are in some relationships, hanging out with some friends and you're in the friend zone. Like, when you going to realize how good of a woman I am? Yeah, when you go, I, you, you get, you just got to find me. But I remember at certain points of the game, when you couldn't find them, you just had to tell them, come out. When they come out, that's when you look for, because you know you're scared. It's a scary thing to look for in the figures. It's a scary thing, I'll tell you why. Because here what I'm about to tell you, when I look, I don't know exactly what you look like. I just know that I'm looking for you. Some of you businesses don't know exactly what you look like yet. All they know is they're looking for your resume. All right. There are corporations that are looking for a new vice president, and they don't know what he or she looks like yet. 
but they know when they show up, this is it. And I want to encourage you today that it's possible that you are not needed where you are. It's possible that you are in a place that you should not be because you're not needed there. But the place that needs you, they're going to say, you are it. So the daughters are now approaching Moses. And Moses goes to God and said, God, I don't know what to do with these things. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, I don't know what to do with these things. Uh, because they, they've been hiding. Where have they been? Where did they come from? See, but the Bible helps me to understand something. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. He that hides. Even David came back and he said, he will hide me in his pavilion. The hidden place is not a bad place. It's different to be hidden than to be holed up. Some people are just holed up waiting for stuff to change in their life. God is calling somebody out today. And I want to, I want you women of God, men of God to catch this. There's some elders that you have to address. There's some people that have been holding, holding the fort. Some people who have been gatekeepers in your life that you have to address. Some things you have to talk about. Don't hide it anymore. Some things you have to speak to. There's some of us whose elders are not people. Some of, the, some of our elders are situations. Some of our elders are abuses in our homes. I have been a victim of physical, sexual, emotional, and mental abuse all my life. And I've come today to address the elders. Give me my freedom today. Loose me and let me go. I wish I had a daughter who understood what I'm talking about. I, I come to declare that some of you are, are afraid to walk into the main offices of your jobs because you don't know what's going to happen. But I loose you today to walk in. Come out of hiding because it is waiting for you. You. Moses says to God Woo! Moses says to God I don't know what to do God said they right mm. There's nothing better than, than hearing That you right But there's something that happens in the book of Joshua chapter 17 Read it at your own leisure Joshua chapter 17 the same account takes place And we just assumed Watch this That the Bible said Moses now fixed it But in the book of Joshua He teaches us something that Moses actually told the women that they've got it. And the women had the right now to go up and say their name to Eleazar, who was now running, who was now as the priest. And he was the one. So God is going to put you in a position, hear me, when you come out of hiding to give you the authority to claim what it is. He said to them, they said, we are the daughters of Sephardim. We have a right. We have been in hiding, but we've come to stake our claim to our inheritance. And we came to claim what land belonged to us. And the Bible says that among them, they, there was a land that was set aside and they were going to give extra to other sons. But because the daughter showed up, they had to snatch the title deeds back. And said, we're going to take some land away from you. We're going to take some land away from you. We're going to take some land away from you. We're going to take some possession away from you. We're going to take this corporate office away from you. We're going to take this house away from you. We're going to take this money away from you. And we're going to give it to the women who have been in hiding. It's nothing that you've done wrong. It's just that the blood was shed. Oh, God. The blood was shed for these daughters. And by the authority, that's in the blood. They have a right to take what belongs to them. I know that y'all thought I was talking about Zelophehad and them but I'm preaching Jesus out of my toes. That the, because the blood of Jesus was shed for you there are things that the enemy tried to steal from you but you have a right to it today. The blood was shed and a name was given and the Bible declares that there was a name which is a of every name that gives me access, that gives me power. At that name, demons tremble. At that name, sickness flees. That name is Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father. I come to declare to someone today, you might have been hidden for a season, but the blood is talking for you. Come here, Abel, and help me explain this thing. The Bible declares 
when Cain thought that he had gotten away, that there was one, hey, 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 there was one moment when Cain thought he had gotten away, and then he says, I hear your brother's blood crying for me out of the ground. The blood in the ground is speaking on your behalf, and I come to declare to somebody today, the Lord is loosing you, he is releasing you to take what has been set aside for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You made it too far. You fought too hard. Hallelujah. The blood was shed for you. The warfare had taken place. Even as I come to my close, consider the fact that Zelophehad's name meant shadow. Which means that before the daughters got there, the prophecy was they were going to be covered. Yeah. Their figures were going to be hidden, oh God. Which means that Zelophehad's grandfather knew that he had to protect their future. And because he had protected their future, they shifted the future of, few of other women. God help me. So in essence, the daughters of Zelophehad, where they had come out of hiding, what they did was they declared to every other femme in the camp that the future is yours. God help me. They declared to every other woman in the camp that the future is yours. They lived what we preached about this weekend that the future is fam oh God, the future is fam, I know some of the men of God are nervous, but the truth of the matter is if the women weren't here, the church would have fallen apart a long time ago so let's loose them into their future, hallelujah let's loose them into their future and to be honest, the church of God owes a lot of women an apology because we kept them bound we held them back, we didn't allow them to speak, but God said I'm coming to loose them If I could preach another text, I would tell every man that believes that the world belongs to them, James Brown lied to you. It's not a man's world. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. All them and them that dwell therein, the earth is the Lord's. And in this hour, Joel too helps us to understand that in the last day I'll pour out my spirit on. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. He said the sons and the daughters would prophesy. If you are afraid of women prophesying next to you, man of God, you are short-circuiting the prophecy of God. I tell you, women of God, the future belongs to you. Take it. What has been set aside for you, the blood has already been shed. There is a parcel for you, there's 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 a parcel for you. It has been set aside. But you've got to come out of hiding. You've got to come out of hiding. You've got to come out of hiding. Father, I charge this house to be a house where we encourage the daughters who are in hiding, the sons who are in hiding, to come out of their places. Lord, you, your word lets us to know that there is a possession that has already been assigned to them that will come out of hiding. Call and calling sons out of hiding. Daughters come out of hiding. You, you were worked on. God dealt with you. Now come out of your hidden place. I don't care what apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher told you. You cannot be here. The blood was shed so that you can take possession. The lot has fallen in your faith. The lot has fallen in your favor. The lot has fallen in your favor. The lot has fallen in your favor. Psalm 16 tells us that as a matter of fact, where the elders don't know how to mark out the land, that God himself becomes our boundary. He marks out the property for us. And the land is a good land. Come forth out of darkness. Come forth out of your hidden place. And I imagine them walking out. And they said, we 
belong to be here just as much as you do. I know some of you are so churchy. Y'all wait for altar calls. But the altar call, belo the altar belongs to you. Hallelujah. The altar is much yours as it is mine. The altar is much yours as it is you. The altar is much yours as it is the sinner. This belongs to you. The blood was shed for you to come to the altar. Where you are, but come to this altar quickly. 